the, the simple fact is that uh, when Leibach started back in 1980, we understood ourselves as a, uh, not only as a producers of art, again, I don't like to use this word, uh, but I would say producers of statement, but uh, also as a kind of uh, social sculpture on itself, in itself, as a kind of machine that is a social sculpture. That's how we saw Leibach. And that's how Leibach, it is and nowadays still. It's a collective uh, machine, anonymous machine. This is exactly what we wanted to do. Everybody can be basically Leibach. Nowadays, there are so many people involved and everybody is producing in this machinery that, uh, that, uh, that Leibach has become a notion and as a notion, kind of a metaphysical notion, or maybe in, a, in the Malevich sense, suprematistic notion, is completely anonymous and uh, completely uh, collectivist, basically. I am here, but I'm not here. I represent something which is much bigger than I am. 1984, <laughs> in znak sta vizuelna materializacija ideje na nivoju enigmatičnega misljenega simbola. Ime Leibach se prve krat pojavi leta 1144-ga kot originalno ime za Ljubljano in to z etimološkim pomenom mesta obreki. Znova se pojavi za časa austro-ogreske monarhije, tokrat kot alternativa že obstoječi slovenski varijanti. Ime Leibach se spet pojavi po kapitulaciji Italije, ko so nacistojni domobranci zapirali, mučili in pobijali Ljubljančene, ki niso verovali v zmago Tretjega rajha. Leta 1980 se s pojavitvijo mladinske kulturne skupine četrtječ pojavi Ime Leibach, ki pa zdaj sugerira na konkretno danost možnosti za nastanek politizirane, sistemsko ideološke umetnosti, kot posledice vpliva politike in ideologije. V tem smislu ime združuje grozo spoja totalitarizma in alienacije produkcije industrije v svoji suženski obliki. Prav, provokacija. Ali veste, kako se slovenci na avstrijskem koroškem borijo za vsako slovensko besedo, za vsak slovenski napis, kako fašisti na tržaškem izzivajo slovence? Kaj pravite na to? Lajbah se okvarja z odnosom umetnost in ideologije katerega napetosti in disharmonije sublimira v ekspresivno občutje. S tem eliminira vsakrišno direktno ideološko in sistemsko diskluzivnost. Naša dejavnost sega preko konkretne angažiranosti in smo popolnoma nepolitična skupina. Konkretni politični problemi nas v tem smislu ne zanimajo. Ne država, ne partija, ne bok in ne hudič. Sredeča je popolni ukiniti svoje ljudske identitete v zavestnem odrekanju osebnega okusa, pripričanja in razsojanja, v svobodnem razosebljanju in v sposobnosti žrtvovanja, identificiranja z višjim, nadrejenim sistemom, z mnoštvom, kolektivom, ideologijo. The big question that everybody is asking herself or himself apropos of Leibach, of course, is are they taking themselves serious or is it meant in an ironic way? Well, I think, of course, this is the wrong alternative, because the automatic assumption of this question is that if your attitude towards a certain social system, system of social values, etc., is ironic, that then you are subversive. You take it seriously, you are a conformist, etc. I think that the whole point, the basic underlying premise of Leibach strategy is that. And this holds not only for Slovenia, but let's say generally, for so-called late capitalism in general even, that system itself has at its inherent condition of functioning that its own ideology must not be taken seriously. In other words, cynicism as today's prevailing mode of ideology means that it is the positive condition of the functioning of the system that its own ideology must, by its own subject, not be taken seriously. An ideal subject today is the one who has ironic distance towards the system, etc., etc. And the reverse of this is that the only way, I would even say, to be really subversive is not 
to uh, develop critical potentials, ironic distance, but precisely to take the system more seriously than it takes itself seriously. And I think that this is maybe one of the keys to Leibach strategy. For example, for the American public, let's recall a typical town in the south of the United States in the 20s. We have the official white law and order rule, etc. On the other hand, we have the nightly dark side of it, Ku Klux Klan, beatings of the blacks, etc. Now, my point is here double. First, the transgression. There is nothing subversive in the transgression of the system. This nightly suspension of the rule of the law and order, uh, lynchings, beatings of the blacks, are transgressions of the system, but transgressions which are inherent part of the system. If you would ask an ideal subject of the United States, of the small south, southern town, uh, where is your real identity? You can break the official public law. You will still be considered as one of us. If you don't solidarize with beatings of which Ku Klux Klan, you are excluded. So, in other words, not only does every system include its own inherent transgression, but identifying with this transgression, which must remain unspoken, concealed, is the real form of conformism. And this transgression must remain hidden, unspoken. Of course, this goes for the United States. Here, in so-called real socialism, we had other forms of these hidden transgressions. And my point is that what Leibach is doing is precisely bringing to the light of the day this inherent transgression, which precisely in order for the system to reproduce itself must remain hidden. We always saw music, and even entertaining music, you know, rock music, pop music, whatever you call it, we saw it as, a, as something who is actually uh, coming out from, uh, from the militant music and military music, not only militant, but military music. You know, in the old times, all big armies, they, they had uh, all very well-organized armies. They had additional uh, musicians uh, who were, you know, you know, going together with the armies in, in the attack they produced noise, additional noise, so that armies were, uh, were uh, louder and scarier. You know, there's this tradition of, of uh, military songs to upgrade the moral of soldiers and so on, etc. So there's the whole music idea of uh, rock bands and pop bands and jazz combos and so on. It's actually coming, at least to a certain extent, from military music. And that's also why Leibach was uh, wearing uh, military uniforms uh, at the very beginning when we started. And that's how we see, we saw ourselves as, a, you know, somehow soldiers, uh, a militant combo.